There was, of course, time to ask about the children's reading preferences and get some to read. In January, the weather was terrible. It was freezing most of the time. Sadly, I had a bad cold. I was admitted to the hospital, hospital for five days and later discharged, discharged with the advice that I continued my treatment at home religiously. Grandma volunteered cheerfully to stay over when my parents were busy at work. I had no concerns with grandma's kind gesture, but my major predicament was a sewing machine coming with her. In my mind, I was hoping I didn't have to learn any life principles or wise saying because I wasn't done with the first. It was freezing Saturday morning. The temperature plunged further into negative digits. The coldest that month in Seattle, Washington, in Seattle, Washington. I felt better by miles, yet I had to wrap up in my in many layers. I got up and went for breakfast, but we kept the house super warm. Where is Grandma? Asked Dad. Dad asked. I think she'll still be in bed, I replied. We had a nice meal. However, it was strange for Grandma not to be part of it, considering her strong emphasis on how important breakfast was. She never missed it. I offered to go and check her, but my dad insisted he will go instead. At the end, it was obvious that the children had fun and Nigeria needs more of such events and children's literature. But we're having something like this, it's, it's, it's laudable and it's wonderful. I don't see so much events being held and children all over reading and uh, authors coming up to read their books to these children. So it's that this is happening, it's wonderful. It's going to part of, entrench our culture. And I know that if you want to nurture leaders, you need to nurture the reading habit in them. So when this is done, we'll have better leaders leading the right way. And that's part of the gap and the problems we have in our country. Today's event was, it's a dream come true for me. It's something that I think a lot of authors should do. Authors need to bring out their books and invite children, let children know about it. Let there be reading events very often, more often. Let it occur every week, every month. I would say um, children tend to do what they see you do. So, I mean, it's not enough for us to buy them books and talk about reading. If we as parents uh, have um, developed a culture of reading, your children will definitely follow, follow through. So it's, it's more than just telling, it's also doing. Children tend to emulate what they see adults do. So I feel like if we read more, then maybe our kids will do the same. We are in a TV world now where it's mostly graphics, um, the laptops and the internet and stuff. But I think I would even recommend that you read black and white paper. Let's go back to the basics. Because, I mean, if you're on your laptop and you're reading, I mean, some children don't even know you're reading. Sometimes I read on my laptop and my kids don't know it's books. So once in a while, I want to actually pick up a book and read and then hope that they'll follow suit as well. It wasn't like I sat down one day and thought, Titi, you're going to be a writer. <laughs> no, it didn't happen for me that way. Actually, before then, I'd been writing songs. So I'd written about 50 to 100 songs and um, tried to dabble my hand a bit on poetry. But Tales of a Dressmaker was totally, thoroughly inspirational. 
you know, in, inspirational. But I should say though that, uh, as you may be aware, that writers usually have three things, three major things that inspire them: their own experience, experiences of other people, and then the imagination. My grandma was a major influence on my life as well as my parents and so I would say most some of the life lessons I borrowed from her own life you know when she was alive and um, kind of like dropped off on me perhaps that's the reason why I put it together because it's actually dedica dedicated to her it's not just musicians actors and footballers that should be heroes to our children a girl we met at the event told us about how it was exciting for her to see in flesh the author of Tales of a Dressmaker, which she just read. She did get to meet her hero. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Pausiami. It's so lovely to meet you, finally. I heard you read my book and yeah. you had been waiting to, to meet me. So what part of the book did you enjoy the most? Enjoy the part that um, Grandma Julie taught um, Sandra the way of life, how she could live in this life. It could be difficult at times, at time, and it could be just so lovely. Did you me. learn any wise sayings at all? Yeah. Okay, interesting. If I were to write another book, what would you love me to write about? To I would love you to write how you live in this life. I think you yeah, want me you to share more of my own personal experiences. Yeah. Interesting. You know, the interesting thing is, as a writer, your um, writing comes from three major places. So your personal experiences, the experiences of other people, and largely, largely, largely your imagination. So in terms of a dressmaker, I actually used all of the three, blended all of the three. I had a grandma whose impact in my life was phenomenal. You know, um, she shared a lot of wise lessons with me. And so I picked a bit of that, bits and pieces here and there, and I put in the tales of a dressmaker. And then I, I did a bit of um, relying on my imagination to put the book together as well. You know, um, what other interesting books have you read? I've read um, Linton's book. I've read books by Lent. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've read different titles and each taught me moral lesson. And so, when you read Tales of a Dressmaker, what part of it did you feel you wanted to talk to the author about? What questions did you have when you were reading it and you're like, oh, if I wish I could meet the author, this is what I would say to her? I would ask if. It might be a funny question. To okay, you. ask me. It doesn't matter. I would ask <laughs> if you were the one at the. If I was um, Sandra, if it was about me. Yeah. Well, a bit, a bit, bits and pieces of it about me, but not not entirely everything. 